Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron and I am back with a, another round of delicious Battleytics uh, reviews here inspired uh, by a poll on Patreon. So thanks to our patrons uh, for this most excellent idea. Uh, the mech we are taking a look at today is, uh, is everybody's favorite, not really. Uh, it is the Jager mech, sometimes called the Jager mech. And often called the Jagger mech, uh, but it is, uh, it is a steaming pile of crap in its, uh, in its native form. However, the one we are going to look at today, it's, it's a twist, what a twist. It is the JM6DG, uh, and this thing packs twin Gauss rifles. It's actually potentially uh, a useful uh, Jagger mech. So we're going to take a look at this guy. Uh, it is 1625 battle value, so still, it appears to be still a bargain, uh, it was produced in 3054 on Sarna. It says uh, a bunch of uh, inspired engineers uh, wanted to basically make this uh, this design. I, I imagine inspired engineers really means the the Yager Mech fan club. Uh, but anyway, it was uh, it, it's an interesting design. Uh, it moves four six. It's got an XL engine. Uh, it still only dissipates 10 heat, which I guess isn't a problem with this design, but no double heat sinks. Um, the only other fancy gear that it has is ferrofibrous armor, uh, but it is still woefully under armored, 6.5 tons for a total armor factor of 116 pips. Uh, so this thing, yeah, this thing really not doing so well in terms of the armor department, as you can see from the center diagram, but weaponry... It's very scary. It's got two Gauss rifles. Uh, and in addition, it has two medium lasers in the center torso backing up uh, those Gauss. Now, this thing might, might not last long, but if you can get a couple of good shots downrange and, uh, and decapitate a mech or really, you know, nail the torso region, I mean, 30 points of damage is a lot. And 1625 is a pretty reasonable battle value. But we need to run it through all the benchmarks. We need to see how it's going to do. So, guys, stay tuned. Jager mech, Jager mech, Jager mech, Battleytics coming right up. All right, and we are back here. We're going to look at the offensive benchmarks first, as usual. Uh, not surprisingly, this thing can't build up any heat. Um, you got three per medium laser, one per Gauss rifle, uh, and even if you're running at full bore, uh, basically you're you're never gonna you're never gonna exceed your heat there. It's uh, it's pretty boring in that regard, uh, but maybe good for starters. Uh, it's kind of fun. It's really not. Um, <laughs> But let's take a look at the damage, 255.6. This is extremely high for a 65-ton inner sphere mech in this era. Um, it, it definitely outclasses um, things like the Atlas um, and other designs, you know, assault-level designs um, in, this, in this particular era. Now, of course, if you look at other twin Gauss boats, like we have the Devastator, for example, that's going to blow the doors off this thing. But if you're looking at your garden variety you know, 3025 refits. This one actually does pretty well in terms of damage. Um, in terms of the lethality index, also doing very well. Time to kill was only 6.84 against the javelin. Now, again, our average across the board is usually around 10, uh, 10 turns to kill the javelin. Uh, so this did it in 6.8, which is which is pretty significant. Um, the real metric here, though, is damage per hit. It's not a surprise. 12.7, that's a pretty, pretty solid shot. Um, it's not a crit finder, but it is something that is going to strip away armor uh, very quickly. So offensively, this thing does pretty well, um, but I think what we really want to know is how this thing does in the defensive benchmarks. Uh, if it's just going to disintegrate too quickly, it's not even really worth it. Um, but if it can hold its own for just a little bit, and it can deal enough damage to be productive, uh, we might have a winner here. So let's take a look at the defensive side. All right, so as we know, looking at that central uh, armor diagnostic 
the, the green bars there, very, very low. What bothers me the most about this is you've got Gauss rifles in the arms and they're under armored by average. For whatever reason, the side torsos are over armored. Now the side torsos do have the XL engine in there, which I, which I hate almost as much as the armor distribution, um, but it is what it is. So this is what we're looking at here. Now, in terms of mobility, it, it's pretty poor. So 11.5% of the time, this thing is taking a motive hit. That's like over one out of one out of 10 hits, right? More than one out of 10 hits, you're taking some sort of motive hit. Um, and that's because the legs are, again, piss poor armored. They've only got, looking at the, the actual numbers, it's only got 12 pips externally uh, and 15 structures. So it's looking got more structure than armor actually in every location except for the head, now that I'm looking at it, it's kind of funny. Um, so thing tends to slow down a lot. Now, most of its damage is coming from the Gauss rifles. 22 uh, hexes, I believe, is the maximum range there. So slowing down isn't necessarily a problem. Losing a leg, however, or losing both legs certainly could be an issue. Um, and you can see the mobility analysis. It's a plus two modifier at the beginning of the simulations. After 10,000 simulations by turn, uh, the, the end of the game, basically, it's at a 0.7, um, you know, movement modifier. So it's it's getting a significant decrease there. That's possibly one of the worst that I've seen, um, although I haven't, I, I have nothing more than qualitative evidence to support that. So let's talk about survivability, 25.1%, uh, also possibly one of the worst ones that I've seen. Look at... Um, Look at the curve, though. This is where it's telling. So it's holding its own. It's doing pretty well all the way up until like turn eight. And then it just dumps, right? So early game, like if you can keep this thing protected, it does pretty well. And what's interesting is most of the deaths here are coming from engine deaths. 56% of those deaths are engine deaths, right? And, and you can see that in the chart. It, it far outstrips... CT head deaths. Now, that's not to say if you stuck a regular fusion engine in this thing, it would be fine because it needs the tonnage for the guns. However, uh, it does sort of speak volumes to, you know, where this thing is weak. I mean, obviously, there's no onboard ammo. I mean, the Gauss rifles can explode, but they're all the way in the arms. Uh, it's unlikely that the 20 points is going to travel all the way in and core out the mech unless you've, you've had significant damage and you're basically having, hanging on by a thread. Um, but yeah, so interesting stuff there. So I have some hope because, again, the, the curve, the survivability curve is, is what's important here. If we can do enough damage over those first eight turns to make that 1600 BV worth it, um, this, could be, this could be a good one. So let's take a look at the efficiency next and see where it lands. All right, here it is. Drum roll, folks. What does the survey say? Pretty good. 8.29 on the efficiency scale. I'll take it. Uh, but uh, let's let's look at the analysis here. So again, the the effectiveness in that top left hand, what you see is um, in the blue. That's our optimized ACD from our offensive benchmarks. Again, that was something like two fifty five point six points of damage, and then the effective ACD is the area in in purple. And you can see as soon as the survivability dumps off, you lose a significant amount of damage. Um, and this just sparked an idea because if you're if you're mostly dying at closer ranges, right? When the, the you know late game as things get closer, right? Why even have the medium lasers? Like just pull them off and put two tons of armor on this thing. I bet you would do a hell of a lot better, um, or at least take one of them off. Um, it doesn't just it just doesn't make sense to me uh, to have those backup weapons, especially you've got 24 rounds of Gauss ammo. That's another thing. I'm off on a tangent, but I'm doing it. Why? Just do 16 per arm. That's way more than enough. Um, or even 24 for, for both guns in total and repurpose that tonnage into something more useful. Uh, 24 rounds per Gauss rifle is absolutely absurd in my opinion. Um, I think the, the engineers were maybe a little overly enthusiastic about this particular design. But then conversely, like if you have that much ammo, why do you need the, the, the medium lasers? I guess if you lose your arms, I don't know. All seems silly to me. I would definitely uh, tweak this one. I think there's opportunity 
Um, but even still, as designed with its garbage 25% survivability rate, it's still cl clocking it at an 8.29. And that's because uh, the BV is just simply so low for the amount of damage this thing can put out at any range. Um, gunnery sensitivity is very, very good, 0.77. That's, that's responsive to increases in gunnery. Um, you can see even gunnery one, you know, gunnery zero, you know, you're seeing a decent climb. Um, the BV, of course, goes up, but let's take a look at gunnery two where all these benchmarks are done. It's a 2200, 2275 to be exact on the BV scale. Um, and your effective damage, that's including the the death rate, right? Is, you know, is in the is in the 160s, almost 170. Um, so that's really not bad um at all. That's really not bad at all. Actually, I'm sorry, it's 188. It's almost 190. Uh, what was I looking at? So 190 is not bad at all uh for for that for that battle value. So again, that's that's over the 12 turn simulation. Uh, 10,000 times that's run, right? So it's almost 190 points. That's pretty, that's pretty darn good. If you can keep this thing alive, it will pay dividends. Let's talk about rolls next uh, and see, of course, where the threat shakes out as well. Okay, so in terms of rolls, there, there is only one place uh, for this particular design, and that is fire support. Keep it in the back line. Uh, if anything gets close to it, shoot it or run away from it. Uh, I mean, that includes like locusts and anything small and harassing. I mean, they can peel off the side torso armor on this mech pretty, pretty quickly. And if you lose the side torso, it's done, right? You lose, you take three, three engine crits pretty much automatically. So you have to protect this mech if you are going to be bold enough to field it. Um, but you can see the majority of the damage, the majority of the alpha strike coming on almost immediately, 30 points uh, and, and the caps out at 40 points, which is when the medium lasers come into range at nine hexes. Um, the other important thing to note is that, uh, there are no lower arm actuators. It's only upper arm actuators, which means you can arm flip both of these arms. If you are using that rule and shoot basically in a 360 degree arc. Um, so as you are running away from the locust, you can, you can arm flip and shoot it, uh, with dual gauss rifles, which is pretty, uh, Pretty, pretty devastating for, for any small mech. Um, you know, overall, there's not much to say. You got to keep it safe. You got to keep it at range. Um, I would say, you know, you can move it into medium range, 15 inch on that, on that Gauss rifle, I believe is where the medium range clicks in. Uh, you can, you can knock your mod up a little bit more, but there's really no need to be any closer than that. In my opinion, those medium lasers purely for backup and if you're into customization and you're using, for example, our uh, you know field refits framework where the where the mods are a little bit more limited, you know I would dump a ton of ammo on each rifle. I would even consider dropping one of the two medium lasers, and I would armor this thing up. Now that is going to jack the the battle value up, and that is going to affect the overall efficiency score. But you're going to get a lot more mileage out of this mech. You know if it's got three tons of uh, extra armor on there. To protect those side torsos and protect those arms. I wouldn't worry so much about the legs, but if you got a little extra, you can slap it in there as well. But that is uh it's a Jagger mech, the Jaeger mech, the Jager mech, the JM6 DG. I actually didn't even know this was a real mech until I was going through Mega Mech uh and and trying to figure out which one of these designs I was going to look at. I didn't want to do the regular one because we all know it sucks. That wouldn't have been fun. Uh, maybe, maybe some of you, you can leave it in the comments if you disagree. Uh, but you know, AC twos, AC fives, it's like a walking bomb. Uh, I don't know. It didn't seem very exciting. This one was a little bit more compelling, um, and, and might be the kind of thing that if you're, if you're crafty or you're clever, um, or your opponent isn't paying attention or you're playing like fog of rule, uh, fog of war rules, where they don't know what variant you're playing until they're close enough, you could really, <laughs> really surprise your opponent with this thing um, because I again I didn't even know it was a thing um, but there it is the JM6 DG uh, <laughs> what a design so tell me what you think about this tell me if you have uh, a Jaeger mech Jager mech Jagger mech that you like better and also tell me your favorite method of pronunciation of this wonderful design uh, but that's all I got a couple of things number one Aries games and minis uh, Derek's an awesome dude. He's got all the stuff for Battletech. So if you're new to the game uh, or if you're looking for a great place to buy uh, your Battletech stuff, 
whether it's the books, the dice, the minis, head on over to Aries Games and Minis. Uh, and also, uh, shout out to our friends over at Terrainify, uh, always, always providing the highest quality uh, tabletop terrain. So if you like to do sort of the 3D terrain like we do, um, and you're not playing on the paper maps, and you like doing that stuff, um, you know, you can head on over to Terrainify and check out some of their terrain. Also great for, for other war games as well. Um, but that said, guys, I am all wrapped up. One more thing. Subscribe please click the like button uh, and also leave a comment, as I had mentioned. And if you want to help out the channel, you can head on over to Patreon and check us out there. So that said, hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks so much for watching. And of course, stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a good night.